Hello YouTube and welcome to this video. Today we'll be discussing the principles of SEO, five principles of SEO. I might go into more principles of SEO um, depending on how uh, long this video gets, but today I'm going to discuss what are the five principles of SEO when you're developing a website? What should you do and what should you look out for um, as you code along? It is very easy to get caught up in the designing of the website and how things look and you ignore the structure of your HTML uh, as an SEO friendly structure. So let's dive into that. The first part of it I'm going to tackle is your title tag. Most people use title tag as a loose way of just saying whatever they think they should be saying. In my case, I do web design, web development, SEO and all that. So in a title tag, it should accurately describe what your business is about. It shouldn't say cheapest web design company, um, you know, and, and things like that. Not unless it's, that's what you're specifically targeting. But if you're looking for customers who are looking for web development, web design and marketing, not necessarily cheapest web development out there, then you should not put that in your title tag. You should put what you think users are looking for, what you are advertising, web design, marketing, SEO, and things like that. So that needs to go into your title tag. Your title tag should not be longer than 78 characters. And that includes all your characters, spaces, and everything. If it's longer than that, search engines like Google will ignore you, will ignore your website. So keep it under 78 characters. Now, now moving on to description. The description tag is used to tell the user what your page is about, what they can expect to see when they get there. Description tag should be should be less than 140 to 160 characters. I would say stay within 120. That's the rule of thumb for me. Stay within 120. Reason why I say that is when you use a search in Google for your business and you put too much description there, it cuts off half the description and you don't accurately get to transfer your message exactly what you want to say. And I'll show you what I mean. Here is a good description right here. It's a complete sentence and it ends. And the company gets to say to the user what they want to say. Here's an example of a bad description tag. It goes and ramble on and then it cuts off because it's too long. As you can see, those three dots means it continues and it cuts off because it is too long um, for a description tag. So you want to keep your description tag nice, neat, clean, and short. Here's another good example right here. They say everything they want to say, but the tag is short. Also, your description tag should have keywords that's in your title. So here you are, web design, web design. And if you notice, Google pair them up because I type web design and web design is in the title and web design is in the description. And Google highlight web design to show you that it is what you're looking for, like they do with every single page. So you need to make sure your description tag has some of the same words as your title tag. And keep it short, simple, and accurate. My next tag I'm about to discuss is their image, your H1 tag, sorry. Most most websites and beginner developers do this. When they're constructing their website, they'll put an H1 tag and because they're unaware or not able to style the H2 tag how they want it to look, they'll skip to like an H3 or H4 tag because it better represents what they're looking for. Like the text might be the size they're looking for or the color or the orientation of the text. And that will drastically reduce your SEO. Make sure your front page have H1, H2, H3, H4 if possible. But H1 and H2 must be on your website somewhere as a heading on your website. You cannot just have H1 and skip H2. It has to be H2 and that will reduce your um, search engine efforts by about 30 to 40 percent. So make sure your H2 tag, H1 and H2 tag is on your page. Each page should have one. So make sure of that. Moving on to images. Back in 2015, April 2015, Google changed its algorithm and to make keywords not so relevant anymore. So, but what Google use is your mobile friendliness of your website, the content that's on your page, your title tag, and your description to, to determine where you should rank on a page. If your images are too large, Google drop down your mobile uh, ranking which also affects your SEO. So it will rank you lower as a mobile device because your image will take too long to, lo to load on a mobile device. Try to keep each page under two megabytes, and I would say even 1.2 megabytes. My page is really, really, 
is full of images, and my page, my entire page, is 1.2 megabytes large. Try and keep your page on a 1.2 megabytes for your images. All your images as well should have alt tags in them. What does alt tag do? Alt tag tell Google what the image is, what the image represents, and also the user alt tag to say what's on the page. Because if your image says in alt tag web design, but you're talking about SEO on your page, then it's a conflict of interest and Google will move on. They won't rank your site very high. If there's no alt tag, Google moves on as well. And so, so make sure there's an alt tag in your page. The second reason to have an alt tag is not only do you get rank higher, not only do Google recognize your pages, but you help out blind visitors as well. When a blind person visit your website, they, they do it solely by not seeing anything. And your alt tag will tell the blind um, visitor to a website what they're, uh, they're looking at, visually impaired people, what they're looking at and, you know, what it's all about. I know most people don't really care about that, but, you know, it, it's all, it's just a nice touch to, to show that, you know, there's something there, not just with people who can see. So that's another way. My last and final one for this video is keywords. Ensure that your keywords accurately describe your page. You should never have the exact same keywords on every single page. If you do that, when Google go there and search, even though Google do not value your keywords anymore, their robot still takes a look at it. And if every single page have the exact same keywords, Google will automatically assume that each of those pages has the same contents. So it won't index every single page. It'll index one or two and drop the rest. So make sure each page have accurate descriptions. So if you have a web design or a marketing page, make sure your keywords say stuff like marketing, um, SEO, or branding, or you know something to do, everything to do with marketing. Now, if you have a web development page, do not put marketing in the keywords. You know. Try and use something that has to do with the web development, UI design, e-commerce, you know, anything that's web design. Yes, you can use uh, multiple keywords on different pages, but also make sure they're in different order of, of how it comes. That will help you as well. Yes, Google don't really value keywords anymore, but unfortunately, there's a lot of people and your grandmas are still using Bing and Yahoo because no technologically advanced people use Bing or Yahoo. So if people are out there who your clients, you can't choose who your clients are. You can't choose what search engine they use. So you should also make sure you're prepared for even the search engine you don't believe is relevant. So those are my five principles. If you want to know how large your page is and how well you're optimized for the web, there is a website you can go to and it's tools.pingdom.com. And my site was rated 100% all the way, but because I use my Google read, my, I'm using Google Analytics on my page, it will it's going to drop me down one to about 70 because I'm using a read there direct to Google um to Google uh, Analytics code, but if I search right here, if I here we go, it's and I'm going to show you the result it generates, and this is will give you a good breakdown of your website, what needs to be improved, what don't needs to be improved. So it shows me one point second, and I know it's less than one second, but it's because I'm using my screen record and my internet suffer. My page size is a 1.2 megabyte, my entire page request. And it's faster than 80% of the, the web. I know that's not true. I know it's 96%, but because I'm using my screen recorder, it drastically always reduce my internet performance for some reason. But here is where it gets interesting. Down here, it will tell you how much percent your images are taken up, how much percent your scripts are taken up, CSS, and try and reduce those as much as you can. This right here is a really, really good score, 96. Most website companies get 76. So, you know, Use this as a guide and use it to break down your site, you know, to, to bring your site down. Google Webmaster Tool is also a great place to go and, and start to check out your SEO, mobile compatibility, rich snippets and things like that. So I'll go in those in another video. But thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Hope you find it useful. I'm out.